Welcome to Wisdom Exchange TV. My name is Suzanne F. Stevenson, the host and co-producer of Wisdom Exchange TV. We're in Ottawa, Canada, with Her Excellency Nuza Chakroni, the ambassador of His Majesty the King of Morocco. Now, you've had a long career in politics. Now, what was the catalyst? Like, why did you decide to get into politics? As you can see, um, regarding my age, um, my generation were really involved in politics. We believed in change. We were fighting for change, for democracy. And we were part of our society, of this development, which now is occurring in my society. So this believing brought me to politics. So of course, when I was a student, I was a member uh, uh, of the union of uh, students, just fighting for our uh, rights as students. Politics is the way. Uh, to be actor in the in your society, uh, to make uh, change you are dreaming uh, for, so uh, that's why uh, I was involved in politics. You know, and interesting enough, a lot of people want change. Some people do something about it. So, was there anything in you when you were young that said, "I need to be somebody"? to be involved in that change. My parents and especially my father. I remember I was six years and it was the first time I was about to go to uh, school. This is, it was the first day. And before I left home, he told me two things. Since now you will be responsible and you will be also free to choose what you want to do in your life, in your professional life, in your personal life. And he told me that freedom equals responsibility. And you have to act for that. You have to deserve it. So it was something, it gives me, you know, like a way how I will behave in my life. At six years old? At six years. That is incredible. Now, was that common in, in your society for a father to say to a young girl, I don't think so, I, especially at that time. Maybe today, currently, maybe yes, society changed and uh, uh, parents are more involved in modernity and more open-minded with their child, but children. So in, in, at that time, it was really, really something like an exception. And I think and I believe that I'm very lucky, you know, uh, to. Uh, had this chance and with my parents to receive this uh, kind of education. Oh, absolutely. I think anywhere in the world for a father or mother to say those words to you at such a young age it could be so powerful. And that's why I would like to pay tribute to my uh, parents and to say that this is a big part in, my, in what I am today. What do you feel are some of the biggest obstacles to entry for women in politics today? I think women sometimes are there they put too many barriers. Of course, the society is not easy. Of course, the society, the machism is sometimes very present in our societies. In every society, for every woman, it was very hard to be involved in politics everywhere. But I think that women should take their fate and come in, in politics, because this is the only way to make things change. In every society, you have who want to build and others who don't care or um, they are not involved in building. So we should be part of those who want to build. Mm -hmm. This is very important to act. So what kind of characteristics do you think a woman would need to have in order to not only survive <laughs> in a political career but excel in a political career? I believe that the first thing you have to be confident. But you have to also to just, uh, 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 how can I express myself to say that I have a mission in my life. I'm not just living. I have to define my mission in my life. And then when you define your mission, you will find all the, the, the way to implement it, to achieve it. The second thing, you should believe you are not facing an enemy. The society is not our enemy. Others are, are not our enemy. We can build with others. And we should be humble because 
many many are in the same you know they have the same conviction many many uh, aim to to build but sometimes in different ways so we just have to understand others and to see how I can become a part of this group which is trying to do things it's a little bit similar we have uh, aiming or we have the same goals when we are many many to build we can be more stronger and we can uh, also can go very very so far yeah. when did your mission become very clear to you or is it clear yet it's never as clear as you can uh, you can imagine it's something you you, you work on it all the time uh, to make sure that this is exactly what what you feel inside because sometimes sometimes it's really hard you want to do many many things you want to achieve many many goals and uh, you, you have a trouble uh, to uh, understand yourself uh, because you are, you know, some subjectivity uh, doesn't allow us to understand clearly what is happening inside. But I think I can say that my mission it was how to contribute to make others uh, being just happy. So the welfare of others, my welfare and uh, the welfare of others, it is something which is like a, a motor mm -hmm. to guide me in my life. Mm -hmm. Did you say someday I would like to be an ambassador? I believe that nothing uh, occurs uh, just accidentally. Mm -hmm. I believe that you have to believe in something. And uh, I'm, you know, deeply spiritual. I believe in God, I'm Muslim, and I believe that when you want to do something, you are convinced that you have to do it because you have a mission, then I think that God uh, helps you to achieve your, uh, your goal. I remember once, I was uh, just teaching at university before I, uh, I, I you know, I become member of the government. But I was since my uh, my young age. I, uh, I I was as I told you involved in politics, and I was teaching at university. And I took the train to go from my city to Rabat, and I met with a former uh, ambassador to Canada, Moroccan ambassador to Canada. Uh, he died. Uh, he was a great man, and uh, I met him in the train. We were talking about what is and what is the mission of. Ambassador, and he was talking about what I was doing at university, and really I was just uh, impressed by this man. And of course, I believe that in my side, I just had a dream in sh this short time to say, oh, if why if uh, maybe if I'm one day ambassador to Canada, it will be something great. I know from '98 to 2002, you are the delegate minister charge of women issues, family, children, um, as well as integrating of disabled people. What would you say has been the biggest change from that time to now in Morocco for either any of those, for children, women, or disabled? I think that we set up a politic strategy. I can't say that without the will. And, uh, the volonté of His Majesty the King, we couldn't achieve what we achieved. But that's why I said uh, le uh, earlier that we need a political will at the highest level in the society. When you have this uh, like uh, uh, green uh, light, you can go. Nothing could be. Uh, not all the barriers became easy to, uh, you know, to move. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very important to set up a strategy. I can say that at that time we set up a strategy, national strategy to fight against violence against women. Because as you, you can imagine, uh, we, are, uh, we signed the CEDA convention, uh, the International Convention on uh, Elimination of, of All the Segregation Against the Women. So we had so we had to implement all the laws and the international convention we signed to. And uh, my role was to put the mechanism 
to implement all the things uh, we are part of. So this uh, national strategy, it was very important as a first step to, uh, to preserve the dignity of women. Because violence is something that occurs in every society, but we should have the mechanism to fight against it. And institutional uh, mechanisms, it's very important. Second, it was uh, how to make women involved in politics. It was one of the most important strategy and uh, to make possible that women working in political parties can be elected. So we were really involved in how to make them elected, not only to make them candidates. It is nice to make them candidates, but the result was very important for us. So we put a mechanism, a national list, that it brought uh, 30 women, it was 10 point 11.2% uh, something like that to parliament and it was the first, first time that women came uh, as a big number uh, to the parliament. It changed completely the landscape, the political landscape and so the Moroccan society was very attentive, attentive to pay attention to this new phenomenon, how women will uh, behave in the parliament, are they able to be politicians and then society discovered that women are able, that they had their input, different input, but it's another vision which complete, which, uh, which uh, enrichi, make our experience more rich. Mm. So that was 11.2%. How many women now are in Parliament? Do you know the percentage by chance? Oh, I think we should have 20% uh, uh, of women in the, in the Parliament. What's the goal? We have 20% women, okay. we have 10% of young people. Mm. Oh good. So we have a, like a kind of quotas that allow 20% of the parliament is women and 10% are young. What's, is there a goal to have a certain percentage? Yes, I should mention uh, that the new constitution which was voted in 2011 stipulates clearly uh, that Morocco is now going to set up a parity. It's 50% not 20 or 25. And this mechanism is now institutional, constitutional, which is very strong. And um, now there is a committee who is involved not in finding the way to implement the constitution. So 50% is the goal? Yes. Yeah, which is, I mean, amazing to hear because I know a lot of countries, including Canada, are still you know, yeah. striving for 30%. <laughs> so it's, it's nice to see that. Kind of switching a little bit more to uh, personalize this, what do you think has been your big, biggest success to date in your political career? Mm. Yeah, I can say that without others and without advices from other women, really I couldn't achieve what I did. I set up goals and I knew what I wanted because my party was also uh, beside me and you know yes um, I think that when we set up the nationalist uh, to, to make women come into the parliament is what well, it was something I was proud of it mm -hmm. uh, because it, as I told you it changed and it's it was the first step to show to um, the Moroccan society then then that Morocco uh, cannot uh, grow and cannot be developed without women participation. And everybody, it was like a consensus about that. It becomes something very natural, normal, that women should be involved. And it facilitated a uh, lot of things for women. They were a little bit uh, afraid about politics. Mm -hmm. It made them uh, more confident and it is possible 30 women in the parliament, it is possible that you can, and now uh, things are uh, growing and changing and uh, the development is uh, really uh, showing that women are playing a role, a very important role. And the, this, the, uh, their uh, input is uh, really appreciated. Thank you for joining us on Wisdom Exchange TV.